Oh, hello! Go, 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 go! Da 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 da! What? <sighs> Stop! Ah, okay, 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 okay. Planet Macaria. Now a shrine world. Here Macarius gathered his army, waiting for the transport plane in orbit around the planet. They then set out to conquer the outer planets of the galaxy, and even beyond the reach of the Astronomicon. Many of these planets had fallen to chaos during the Age of Apostasy. The first major battle of the campaign was against the Angel of Fire cult which ruled the Karsk system. Here the cult was discovered at the Tsienchen front, and the wounded Macarius faced a major change of self, rejecting the promise of chaos power and what remained of his purity. During the crusade, his army encountered many aliens and humans. Notable campaigns include 392M41, the Hive world of Persepolis recontacted the oh, Imperium no. after 5.000 years. Ouch. Macarius sent his army to fight alongside Sejanus while oh. they fought in the deserts of Jidrosia. Mm, Macarius so found an ancient tomb of the Indigona Vagrant and equipped himself. 393M41, a battle against the Chaos Space Marines on the world of Saga. During the battle, 
A bolter and bed struck Macarius in the chest but failed to explode. The confessors during the crusade said it was a miracle and was protected by the emperor. 395 M41, the Amazing. Battle of Tho. General Arian destroyed the last enemy base on the planet after Macarius arrived with reinforcements. 395 to 397 M41, General Borgen Crassus' invasion of the planet Adrantis V, whose people were technologically advanced. Adrantis V and its advanced technology held Macarius at bay for two years, and General Crassus' army lost 90% of its men in combat. In the ending, the War Master only defeated Adrantis V after ordering the construction of a tower on this world. A what? Work of the War Boss dealt a major wound to the War Master. Overall, in the first year of the Crusade, 100 worlds were conquered. In the second year, another 300 were conquered. By the third year, nearly 700 planets had been conquered by Macarius' army. Each planet was carefully examined to decide whether to be wiped out or to join the Imperium. And then Macarius's conquest army accompanied by the missionaries. The First Eleanor War, an alliance of the Black Templars, Crimson Fists, Fists Exemplar, Excoriators, Iron Knights, Ultramarines, Blood Angels, Space Wolves and Dark Angels form the main force of the Space Marines. They are accompanied by a force made up of the remnants of the Imperial Guard and Imperial Navy as well as the Scutari Mechanicum, Legio Cybernetica, Nighthouse Tyrannus and Titans of Legio Ultima. This is all that Lord Commander Corland can muster after the entire defense of Terra was burned to the ground in the Proletarian Crusade. Meanwhile, Grand Master of Assassins Vangoric sends Assad Wire in secret to find and assassinate the Beast, while Vulcan was nominally the Commander-in-Chief of the Imperium. He had locked himself away on the Fist's Exemplar Battle Barge. The Alcazar remembered, carving away at the world, with no interest in leading the war. Overseeing the war was left to Lord Commander Corland and Magus Dominus Jerg Jokov. When the Imperial fleet arrived at Eleanor, they found the planet colonized and almost completely covered in ramshackle but surprisingly organized orc metropolises. And they had no idea where the beast was. The entire planet was shrouded in an energy field that was interfering with the most advanced scanning systems the Imperium had. So the Imperium resorted to using the librarians of the chapters present, connecting their psychic powers to the WOG. Psychic energy. Energy was everywhere looking for clues about the beast. The aftermath of which led to a number of librarians being completely possessed by the WOG power source. Chief Librarian Vanyo of the Ultramarine was the first to be possessed followed by librarians from other chapters, forcing the space marines watching them to punch each one in the face to knock them out and lock them up, despite losing countless librarians. At least they managed to get an important piece of information, the beast was in the capital of Eleanor, the city of Gorkagrad. But where Gorkagrad was, they did not know. Frustrated with sitting around doing nothing, High Marshal Bohemond of the Black Templar personally led all the Black Templar forces currently in Drop Pod down to Eleanor and attacked everywhere. Lord Commander Geogre Corland ordered Bohemond not to act on his own, but received the reply, come down here and fight, or go home. With no other choice, Corland ordered the entire Imperium force to land on the ground while he met with Vulcan to inform him of the situation. After hearing the situation Seven report, Vulcan pointed to a place on the map and said that Gorkagrad yeah. was there. The location Vulcan pointed to was the Triumph of Eleanor, where the Emperor appointed Horus as War Master and where the flag was planted to honor the Imperium of Man's greatest victory over the Orc Empire. That place was the center of Gorkagrad and there was a giant temple called the Temple of Mork and Bork. After the Black Templar forces with the help of the Blood Angels cleared an area on the outskirts of Gorkagrad to allow the Imperium ships to land troops on the planet's surface. The Imperium forces in orbit began to land troops. As Gorkagrad was protected by a massive energy shield and equipped with numerous surface-to-air missile batteries, 
Orbital bombardment was largely useless and ground forces had to be taken out directly. As the Imperials marched towards Gorkabrod's outer defenses against the weak Orc resistance on the outskirts, it was here that the beast launched its first real attack. The surface of Eleanor moved of its own accord and it was then that the Imperium realized that the Greenskins had remade Eleanor into an attack planet transforming the battlefield from the Imperium's vantage point to their advantage and luring the Imperials into areas ambushed by disciplined orcs cost the Imperials dearly. The hidden space gun system suddenly appeared and fired directly at the Imperium fleet in space, destroying countless warships, including the Alcazar remembered, forcing Vulcan and Corlin to quickly land on the planet and order all soldiers on the ships to land, then order the entire fleet to withdraw from the planet, Countless Orc Gargants finally appeared, engaging the Imperial Titans. Imperial Guard casualties rose to 50% against the Astartes, who were a third of their total strength, as they attempted to advance on Gorkagra to eliminate its space defense cannons, allowing space warships to bombard the route. However, through sheer determination and determination, as well as Vulcan's direct intervention, the Imperial forces gradually regained control and established a strong base outside Gorkagrad. They also succeeded in destroying 80% of Gorkagrad's space defense cannons. Meanwhile, Imperial assassin Asad Wire infiltrated the Beast's Temple, the Temple of Gork and Mork in the heart of Gorkagrad. Once inside, Asad Wire found a line of mega-armored orcs to the size of war bosses, accompanied by a mega-gargant waiting inside. Asad Wire realized that he could never get close to the beast with this power. And perhaps more importantly, he had to warn the Imperial Command of the danger as they advanced on the temple. Wire quickly hijacked an orc aircraft and headed straight for the Imperial ranks, warning them of what he had seen. With the information gathered and Vulcan's approval, Corland ordered that the Imperials change their target to attacking the orcs' food storage. As the orcs in Gorkagrad were already starving, they began to eat the human slaves they had captured, then the Gretchen, and eventually each other. The Imperials believed that with their remaining food supplies in jeopardy, the Beast and the Warrior's elite guard had to go out from the temple and attack the Imperium's ranks directly, where they had the advantage. Religion Although the Emperor is revered by the Adeptus Mechanicus for his ancient knowledge and understanding, the tech priests do not follow the imperial cult, but rather a completely different religion, known as the cult mechanicus or cult of the machines. The tech priests perform a ritual. The cult mechanicus originated in the age of strife. According to the teachings, knowledge is the manifestation of the supreme being, and therefore all creatures and creations that contain knowledge are sacred. Machines that contain ancient knowledge are also divine incarnations. And the intelligence of machines is no less sacred than that of flesh and blood. Huh? A man's worth is the sum total of his knowledge. His body is simply a biological machine whose job is to preserve knowledge. In the teachings of the cult, life itself has no intrinsic value. One of the most obvious examples of this belief is the use of humans as raw material by the tech priests to create slave machines known as servitors. To the cult mechanicus, machines represent a higher form of life that can be advanced through biological evolution. The supreme worshipper of this religion is the machine god, or deus mechanicus who is believed to have created all technology and made it manifest through enlightened beings among humans. The machine god may be the Tan Void Dragon, who was buried beneath Mars for millennia and worshipped by the cult Mechanicus before the Emperor's arrival. The cult Mechanicus awaits the emergence of the Omniscia, the prophesied physical manifestation of the machine god. During the Great Crusade, the Emperor's forces unified many of the Forge Worlds that had been established as ancient Martian colonies. When the Emperor arrived on these worlds, the cult Mechanicus there recognized him as the long-awaited Omniscia. Language Lingua Technis Or Technolingua 
is the primary language of the Adeptus Mechanicus. It is a binary language, optimized for the rapid communication of technical specifications, consisting of a barrage of static electricity emitted through a bioimplant implanted in members of the Mechanicum, so that it is incomprehensible to those without the implant. The Quest for Knowledge A mission of the Adeptus Mechanicus It includes research and exploration But the focus of this mission is the restoration of a functioning standard template construct, STC The goal of many exploration missions is to recover knowledge of the STC For thousands of years The tech priests have pursued information about the STC to the Mechanicus. This is the Lost Bible. Any information about the STC, even a few fragments of knowledge written on a blueprint, is sought after and preserved as sacred text. No STC system has ever been recovered. The STC exists only in printed copies, some thousands of years old. Although considered the most reliable, very few of the first-generation copies exist, and they are considered the most sacred. Through the efforts of the tech priests, much has been recovered and reconstructed through comparison of copies. Yet the knowledge of the most advanced technologies still eludes the Adeptus Mechanicus. Most of the early colonies had very simple needs and very few of them took the trouble to preserve the theoretical and technological information that the STCs contained. During the Horus Heresy event, it was this quest that led half of the Mechanicum.